going to be demonstrating the next step in our narrative figurative uh, work in ink and graphite. I'm going to go ahead and start with a 2B. <clears throat> As I said before, my last drawing was really, really big. So um, I'm just going to demonstrate on a smaller piece. Remember, I told you you could use a half size of that Lennox paper. And so that's what I did here. I went ahead and cut that down in half. Um, so you can get the project done a little bit faster. Now, my narrative had to do with this um, sort of ridiculous bodybuilder that became sort of this fake messiah. <clears throat> and uh, one of the parts of that narrative that I really liked was when he was talking about how it feels to have those steroids injected into a system like a screaming ambulance down a really quiet neighborhood. And I found this image on one of our uh, figure drawing uh, uh, model sites. And, you know, he's hammering. And I thought that could, that could be a really interesting metaphor. But as you can see, we have some proportion problems here, right? So I want to make sure that I'm adjusting these things so they're, they're accurate uh, to one another. It's the same model, but I'm going to take a lot of um, uh, liberty, artistic liberty with like the portrait and changing some things about this because these are honestly, they're copyrighted images and I'm just looking for the gesture and the figure from this so that I can make the original work. I'm going to go ahead and do a fast thumbnail on here first. You don't have to do this if you feel confident and want to move straight to the good paper, um, but remember to sketch lightly so that you can erase things, right? And hold your pencil the right way, you know, no pinch or grasp, hold it out here, go loose. The first thing that I do when I'm dealing with a figure is I think about the, um, I think about the ideal proportions. We did that in our sketchbook, and so a male's figure should be about seven and a half heads high. So his head is that big. And so what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half units. He's got a contrapposto here, meaning that he's got most of his weight or almost all of his weight on this foot here. This one out here is really not bearing any weight whatsoever. So <clears throat> as such, I want to make sure that I have this gesture that's going straight down and coming out this way. So usually I start with this kind of a scenario. Now in order to fit him on here, um, I have to think about how big that's gonna be, and then I will create a relationship between this figure and that figure, um, trying to get the cranium units um, similar, where I'm gonna shrink this one down. So <clears throat> generally, I'm gonna kind of map out the layout. So I know that I want my figure, like my main figure probably not right in the center. Um, I'm gonna move him off to the side just a little bit. So I'm just going to give myself a good uh, barrier right here. Um, I, I, I want to get my figure like within this area roughly. And so I'm going to imagine that this is the size that I need. Um, and I'm also going to go ahead and drop in an area where his foot's going to go. Now I want this foot out here, so I need to give myself a little bit more space. So that means I probably need to bring this back here for the foot that's coming down. And then I need to bring this one up out here for the foot that's coming out. And then that can position this, um, this gentleman so that he's, uh, he's injecting those whatever um, he's injecting in, right? So now I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to move up throughout here. Um, looking at this figure, I'm feeling like if I start up here for the head and I go with a unit about that big, I can measure that, come down, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it looks like I'll get a half in about right here. So that means I can actually move these up because my half should be about down here, right? Um, so that would mean that this is my, this is my kind of ground level. So I'm going to go ahead and move this one up here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move this one back because if we look at this, how I measured it out, this is kind of in between the seven and the seven and a half. It's like the heel would be right on line with the seven and then the toes almost come out to the seven and a half. So what I'm gonna do there is, um, let's see, let's space those out, out just a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the heel going that way. I'm gonna bring the foot out this way. I'm just gonna do a simple gesture at this point. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and look Look at the dominant gesture that's happening with this leg. So I'm gonna trace in space like I've always taught you guys to do. Um, I know that when I go up, let's see a half, one, two, three, this is roughly the pelvic area. So if I go a half, one, two, three, boom, and I go a half, one, two, three, boom, I can extend that across and I can start looking at how that relationship 
helps me with the pelvic area. And sometimes I'll even draw over my stuff in there to see the correct proportion. And at first it's going to look weird because you're reducing the image, right? Um, because you're maybe not going to feel like it looks correct, but that's what the gesture is all about. We spend some time doing a really fast sort of mass gesture. You get the spine in there. You look at his shoulders. I always like to start with the shoulders, but I'm starting here because I wanted to fixate that position inside of the pictorial space. So I'm going to go ahead and drop these in here. And if we look at the shoulders, the shoulders kind of line up with the outside of the quads because he's a very bulky figure um, in his you know training and all that stuff. So wherever I have decided that my mass gesture out here should build that bulk, I'm gonna go ahead and drop that knee in there. I usually just do a little circle for that. And again, it looks messy, but you know this is a, one of those first identification steps that we use to kind of help us. That knee kind of cantilevers out just a little bit. So I'm gonna drop this out here. Go ahead and get that calf in there. Just using my basic shapes, fast analysis. You want this to be a quick process for you in the future so that your drawing is efficient. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and bulk out the hips just a touch. And we're gonna go ahead and come down from the top at this point. We're gonna get the head involved. We know this is about the center as it goes through the crotch area, straight through. Um, so that first realm in here should roughly be where the head is, right? Now, if we come down from that, we see in our second quadrant here, our shoulders are about halfway through. So we have that first one here, we have that second one here. I'm gonna go ahead and just draw a line out here. I know that this should exist out here, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a shoulder joint and another shoulder joint out here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bulk out his neck just a little bit. Bulk out the shoulders a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and get those arms moving out. Looks like I need to maybe move up the shoulder a little bit. I'm gonna bring this back. And it should come into contact here with the rest of his figure. So I'm just gonna mask this thing out to practice. This is gonna come out about the same way, but if you look at it, this comes out like this. This comes out just a touch more this way. This is a little higher, this is a little lower. So if I've gotten this one out here, this arm out here, it means I need to get this one just a touch lower. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this one down, get that shoulder joint or that uh, elbow joint in there. I'm gonna bring that fist right in here. So I kind of have the general gesture happening here. Um, it definitely makes his head look a little bit small. I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger as such, give him a little bit broader shoulder base, uh, build out some of the trapezius muscles that are in the sides, kind of give some indicators of some of the musculature that's happening in here. And then I'm gonna start looking at some of his contour elements. All right, so that looks pretty good um, for now. Now I'm going to go ahead and try to work with this figure as well. And my head units here are going to be this big. So when we look at this figure, um, he's a little different, right? And some of the practice that we've done, talking about how we can use those cranium units to start um, working with different figures um, in different positions. So if I look at this, I can come down here and I can go ahead and make a mark through here as well. Because his spine is roughly straight until it gets here and it starts to curve. Then I'm going to come down here, I'm going to curve it down just a touch. I'm just kind of drawing over my subject. Looks like one, two, three, four is gonna be about the buttocks area. We're gonna kick back around in this area and we wanna add like another one going out here, 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 and he's gonna end here. So his torso <clears throat> is another way that I can sort of think about mapping this out, right? Um, so the way that I'm gonna handle that is I'm gonna go ahead and work this out. Think about how many head units I would have here. So if that's a head unit and I go vertically with that. One, two, three, four, and about a half. And that's because he's crouched down. <clears throat> so if we start with a half here, because we want that to be connected here, um, we'll go ahead and come with this measurement 
So instead of you know a full unit, we'll use this half right here because it's already measured out for us. Then we're gonna come up a full unit, two, come up a full unit, three, full unit, four. And that should roughly be where his head is at this point. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and position his head like this. I'm gonna get a head unit going back this way and I'm gonna drop a shoulder back here. I'm gonna get a shoulder up in here. I'm gonna go ahead and do more gestural type work when it comes to this. I'm gonna get that shoulder involved. I'm gonna bring this arm back this way. You can see I've drawn off the paper, unfortunately. I'm gonna think about where this comes back in. <clears throat> Looks like it comes back almost to the shoulder. So it's just gonna be pointing at the shoulder. The hand's gonna be in here, the hammer itself in this uh, area right here. And it looks like I'm gonna have to work out uh, a good straight perspective down to here, bicep, elbow, arm, hand. And this is gonna be the other hand here. So from there, I'm gonna go ahead and think about his torso and it foreshortening back. It's gonna get smaller as it goes back in the space. Now his knee's coming at us, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop that knee up here and make it bigger. Again, those special problems with uh, with the figure are gonna help you a lot with this. I'm gonna try to get these angles to come back. So I'm, I'm using a mixture of gesture drawing, cranium units, and just some general logic type perception, right? And I can make some uh, alterations if needed. Let me get that, the buttocks back here. Again, off the page, unfortunately. I'll have to repaint that later, I guess. And then we're gonna have this knee coming out from this area. Now, if anything looks off at this point, right, we wanna go ahead and do what we can to change the perspective of some of this stuff. Here, we're not going to see much of that knee at all, in fact. So I feel like I've got my basic general gesture. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and lose this image here. Um, I will, however, put it off to the side so it can help me with some of the references that I figured out in terms of gesture. Um, I have bigger paper here, which is nice. So what I might do is I might go ahead and um, use the same units here and then just move everything a touch over. And I should have room for this figure over here. So I'll keep it the same size as such. Um, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a much cleaner version of this gesture drawing. And so again, starting over here, I'm gonna start with the baseline. And if you remember, like what I did here was I lined that foot up there with that foot coming out. We're gonna line the this back here up with kind of where the knee is. And so I'm gonna start with this and just bring a line across that I'll erase later. Um, I'm gonna come up a half a head unit. I'm gonna measure that. Whoop. Half a head unit, I'll measure it out the same way. And if you can kind of intuit that without having to measure, you can see I, I'm not using a ruler, obviously. That's a half a head unit. Um, now I'm gonna double that up, right? I'm gonna go here. Here, 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 here. So I've got half, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one more up here. And you can see that roughly just by eye, eyeballing that here, I've got the same dimensions, right? This is about perception. It's about helping you get to that, um, that level where we can just do all this information in our heads. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get a good vertical coming over here, and I wanna maintain a good amount of space here. So <clears throat> I'm gonna move him out here, maybe make sure the elbow doesn't go beyond that. So looking at these measurements here, it looks like I can get away with a good center line for my figure here. So that means I'm gonna go ahead and drop in the head here. And again, I'm going a little slower at this point, right? I'm gonna come out here, reference my image a little bit. 
get the shoulders involved. The shoulders again are just right in between that area here. So I'm gonna come out about right here, I'm gonna come out about equal over here, come down to this. Kind of get that going on. Think about some shape analysis in here. I can start working out my contours. So yeah, I, I want to move to contours. You all have uh, probably been very frustrated with me as I've said, we're not going to do anything with contours, you know, because if we always start with contours, it's going to be an issue. Um, but when you get to the good drawing, it's time to start cleaning stuff up, right? So yeah, we are going to work with some contour work, but I like to do a little bit of gesture too. It just helps me. So again, that's higher. So I'm going to bring this out lower just a little bit. We want the arms to be the same length. lower and we want this to come back okay um, so now we can start to think about this big V shape that we have going on in here because we have that mapped out um, as such so looking at this and how that's going to come out how that's going to come out here we look at kind of where the pectoralis area is here it's going to go one two and it's at the bottom of the second one so this is a good pectoralis area so we can bring that up and in, up and in here. And then we can start to look at the uh, abdominal areas and where they, those will go. And remembering that our crotch area here is gonna be like one, two, three, four. It's gonna be like roughly on the four. So we can work that crotch type area in here, thinking about the hips and how the pelvis is going to um, flare out here. And then it's gonna get a little bit skinnier in here, especially in a male. So, we're gonna go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Totally helps me to do that. So that's roughly gonna be in this area. It's gonna kind of be about here to about here. I just call these kind of action figure <laughs> type pelvises. I used to like explode my GI Joes when I was a kid. And, I always remember the pelvis areas where they were stuck in with rubber bands and I thought that was the weirdest thing ever. Okay, so now we bring this, this leg. Remember, it's a, it's a supporting leg, okay? That leg comes all the way to the side of the head. So the side of the head is here. So that means the leg's gotta be over here. So we bring that out here and we want that to go to our half, right? So if we remember, this is the end of our half. That's the beginning of our half, okay? So this should be where the heel is and we want the foot to come out just a little bit like this. And then of course we'll clean that up and modify it later. And yes, it does look weird at this point, but boom. And I feel like maybe I need to extend that just a little bit. Sometimes we don't always adhere to perfect proportions as such. We'll go ahead and add these elements here. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and elongate his leg quite a bit, do some erasing on that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this one out as I did before. I'm gonna go ahead and say one half, right? One, two, so roughly between the two. So one half here, one, two. So we know that this should come down here, actually. And that definitely makes this look weird, so I need to bring that all the way down here. So that's actually where that needs to go. I kind of got lost on that one, so. I'm gonna have to do some erasing in there. So I'm gonna bring that out here. I'm gonna bring that down. I'm gonna kind of have this going here. And then he's more pointing his toe in this uh, position. So I just want that to end up on the very, very bottom of this half. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that heel in here and then think about the toe and how it's gonna point. We're gonna go in and refine later, add musculature, you know, clean things up, that kind of thing. Definitely need to add more bulk to this side, and it looks weird without um, all of the bulk for the arms. So I'm gonna go ahead and bulk those out just a touch more. Get that skinny here. I'm gonna go ahead and add the fist in here. Use some planar analysis to help me. I'm gonna build that shoulder up a lot more. Just kind of building off of like an imaginary armature here. Armpit should really come in here. 
So I'm pretty happy with what I've got there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start working with the other figure and try to get him in here as such. And so I'm gonna start with that hand this time because I want that to be lined up. And I'm gonna go, let's see, for the half, it's gonna go up one half, so hand, one half. Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead and make a place marker for that. Um, let's see, here we go, that happened here. So really we're gonna go up one, well, that's a half, okay? And then we're gonna go up one, two, three, four to the head, right? So the half here, and then the one, two, no, the half here, and the one, two, three and a half. So we're actually probably gonna have to go, lines up right here with the crotch here. I'm just gonna bring that across. I'm just gonna take some shortcuts here. I'm just gonna kind of follow what's happening here. It looks like if I were gonna do that, I would need to probably put his shoulder, since his head is gonna be like right in here. Looks like his shoulder's gonna have to be in this area here. And then we're just gonna go ahead and get that stick figure aspect here, elbow here. I know what we want to do is maybe bring some of this marking out here. And again, we're probably not going to be using the same method. The shoulder comes way out, so if we look at the cranium unit here, and we go from the ear, it's going to be like about there. And that's about where we're going to start this development of the shoulder here. And that's going to be higher than this shoulder. So if that shoulder's here, that means I need to get this shoulder up in here. Okay. So now I'm gonna bring this back and one handy thing I can look at is the imaginary grid of taking the elbow straight over through the armpit type area. So I know that armpit type area is here. So I can go ahead and bring that back to here. Then I can bring it almost straight forward, right? And that hand itself is gonna be about halfway in between the head and the elbow. So if we look at the head and the elbow, we go about halfway in between, I've kind of stopped in the right area. And I'm just gonna give a little placeholder again for that. I wanna get the right gesture here. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this going this way. I'm gonna get the claw hammer aspect of it back in here. Okay. And then um, I'm gonna start having to think about foreshortening at this point, right? Because I've got the upper body worked out. Um, so he's broad here and he's gonna go back into space. So if we thought about this like, you know, a cylinder and it were foreshortened, it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't look like this necessarily. It's gonna look more like this because he's coming at us and this is going away from us. So what we want to do is think about how that torso is going to come back. So I'm just going to kind of like go for my shoulders and bring it back like that. Sort of imagine this shape happening in here. And that's going to help me understand where the buttocks should go. And the buttocks are going to be right behind the elbow. So the elbow's right here. So um, as I bring that back, I'm going to think about where this shape for the buttocks should exist in relationship to the other arm since I already have that drawn. So it should be kind of like in this area where the bicep is. And so um, it looks like maybe I have the elbow just a little bit too low. So I'm going to modify that. And then what I'm going to do is drop the buttocks down in this area. So it extends out to some degree. Then I'm going to bring this up and it's going to go behind this stuff here. I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a nice big knee. And that knee's relationship is like it goes straight off this direction here. Then what I'm gonna do is bring that back. And that's gonna be the calf type area here. And we want this, this foot to be a little higher than what we have here. So we're gonna use this half relationship that we developed earlier for that. And that means that I'm gonna to have to come back like here. I'm gonna to have to put an indication of the ankle here. And again, if it's out of proportion, I'm gonna fix that later. I just wanna get the good gesture now. 
get that foot involved in there. And because this is overlapping this, I'm gonna pay more attention to this and I'll work with this later. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get this in here, kind of bulk out to some degree. And pay close attention to how the musculature overlaps one another. And if I feel like I need to change anything, I certainly will before I start working with ink on top of this. Looks like I always like to make my feet just a little bit bigger. It seems like it helps set the figures down a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm ready to go ahead and start with um, a little more rounded out. Um, yeah, I feel like we need just a little more bulk, a little more booty there. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and bring this in from this area out to essentially that arm. Now this arm is not bulky yet, right? Um, I haven't added a lot of the musculature to it. So it doesn't have to go like straight up into it. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get that same gesture. It looks like I can go basically from this area here to here. And when I'm thinking about that, I kinda want that knee to be touching and hitting here, okay? And then it's gonna come back because he's kneeling and crouching. Um, it's gonna come up a little bit because we can see a little negative space in there. And we're gonna see part of that thigh in there as well. Um, so these are going to be things that I refine later. And we're going to get the other part of the quad going over the top of this. And again, we're just going to draw that in there until I can get the bulk of this arm looking nice. Um, one extra little detail I see is part of this foot back here. So now I'm going to go ahead and drop that foot back in here and get those toes as they're curling back behind in here. So now that I'm at this point, um, I feel like I'm ready to go ahead and start cleaning things up and um, especially like correcting this, um, correcting some of, you know, he looks a little bit wide here, so I might have to build him up just a touch um, and then start making this look a lot more fluid as such. Um, so I'm going to do that in pencil first, okay? Um, I'm going to shoot a time-lapse video for that because it's just a lot more efficient than you watching me draw for like an hour. Um, and then I'm going to start working ink over the top of it with ink wine, with wash, um, but I'm also going to do a lot of pencil shading. And you have a lot of opportunities to use these mixed media together. Um, so don't think that I'm expecting you to use all um, of these, uh, you know, all ink or all graphite. Um, you know, use what works for you. It's your style, right? Um, so that's what we're doing with this expressive drawing as such. Now we have a a little progress assignment, right, for Thursday. So I wanna see how far you all are on the good paper by then, and so you can post that on Flipgrid. Um, I'll be sending out emails, so continue to check your email, right? Um, thank you, have a good day, and uh, check out my time-lapse that'll be coming up after this.